Chapter 8, The Terror Within. Nice metal bending match to start things off. She's got Lin's, uh, Lin's cord. Let me just try this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll... Ah! Trial by fire. That was uncalled for. He's gonna get it. He'll get it. Ah, oh, nice shot, Bolin. But I thought you were supposed to be practicing metal bending. No one gets it right away if they can get it at all. Except for, you know, Korra. Ah! Right. Metal bending champion. <laughs> Every time I eat raw kale, I'm gonna think of you. How often is he really gonna think about her in that case? You guys are heading up after finding more airbenders, right? Yeah, but that's in the future. Oh, I hate the future. <laughs> Until then, We'll always have kale. Can I give you some relationship advice? Yes, please. Um, no. Well, Do it. you're lost. Damn it, I want Varric's relationship advice. I feel like it would be mind-blowing. Wasted opportunity. Look, if someone like Varric offers you advice, you don't have to take it, but you should listen to it at least. At the very least, you'll learn how to escape from your relationships, which is sometimes valuable. I hate sitting down here. Not because of you. I can tell you're lying. Oof. Oh, well, none of us could be more proud of you. You're an incredible daughter, sister, Friend, and soon to be airbending master. That's sweet. So I was initially very suspicious of them. Everything just seemed a little bit too perfect. And there may still be more that I don't know, but in hindsight, I think one of the main reasons why they're set up that way is just to contrast with Lynn's life. Like, we know what happened to Lynn in terms of relationships, and she obviously has no children, and it seems like she lives a relatively modest life. So it's a really interesting contrast having Su Yin, the former criminal, having such a wonderful picture-perfect life. It's gonna be interesting to see how Opal fares going out into the world because she seems like she's really well-adjusted and really cool, but she's been kind of sheltered. And she's probably going off to a life of like Tenzin's harsh austerity training. Oh, they're in the city? Wow. Oh, that's right, I totally forgot that in the end of last episode, they figured out they were with the Metal Clan. So one thing they definitely set up, and I mentioned this when it came up, is like, this is the safest place on Earth, right? That's, you know something bad's gonna happen when you say that. Never say something is safe in movies or TV shows. <gasps> what? What's going on? <laughs> it's a terrifying alarm scream. Wow. Oh, this is their first meeting. Wow, they got her. Habu, it's not playtime right now, okay? We are seriously going to have to have a talk. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, get up. Can I just say as an unrelated side note, I find it cute that they sleep in the same room still, even though like they probably could have their own rooms. Wow. They're gonna have a showdown with the, the two crews. That was great. I never get tired of watching these two. She can bend her combustion? She can curve her combustion? Yes. What are they tunneling? Wow. That guy's lava bending. That's awesome. Not good for us. This is awesome. This is a really cool first meeting. This show and this season in particular has done a great job establishing that all these people are really powerful. So it feels awesome when they actually come together and you're wondering like, how's this gonna play out? The level of suspense is heightened because you know the power that each of them bring. I'm going to create some cover. We're getting out of here. It's also interesting, like, in a weird way, we see it from the villain's perspective. It's like, they're the underdogs a little bit in this fight and they gotta figure out a way to escape. This is so great. She's a combustion bender. If one of you can stun her, her powers will be knocked out temporarily. Bolin can land a shot. I can? Yeah, you with that little the rock right trick. We out. I do? <laughs> you got this, Bolin. I love how much confidence Mako has in his younger brother to get that done. He has more confidence in Bolin than Bolin has in himself. I can't get a clean shot! You have to! Are we a go? No go. Copy that, we're a go. I said no! Uh oh. Bolin, take the shot. You got this. 
I love how this scene in the beginning where he hits Sue's son in the forehead with a rock is foreshadowing for this moment. <laughs> nice job, little bro. The explosion took out all of them. Except for Minghua. Nice. I was just remembering the other day about how when Aang first fights Zuko, he does like the staff air hit on Zuko and just knocks him into the wall. And I remember saying, It's not fair. With Zaheer having airbending powers and using them as a villain, you remember like, oh yeah, airbending is super powerful. And he just did the move right there. Yeah, it's like, how do you fight that? Nice. That was amazing. Thanks. Cool. I love how they're working together. We failed. You definitely made a splash. That scene was definitely way up there in terms of fights. It's difficult to even say that because there have just been so many great action sequences so far. They've done such a good job balancing powers and power levels in this show. Every time a new character enters the scene, you're like, oh, here we go, right? Like Lin, Sue, Bolin and Mako, obviously the villains. It's exciting. And it's especially cool that the villains feel a little bit like outnumbered. It was also a really nice touch having everyone do that fight in their pajamas. It makes them extra vulnerable. Really cool scene. They must have been working with someone. What is your full name? Where were you last night? Oh yeah, he's like a natural lie detector. What was I doing last night? Same thing I always do. From 9 to 10, I checked my body for ticks. Lyme disease is a serious killer. They have Lyme disease in the Avatar universe? But that's irrelevant. The point is, you don't need to have Varric here. Alright, we all know that he never has done anything wrong ever. And you're also stopping Varric from doing really important things. He's got businesses to ruin, I mean run. He has... Inventions to make and girlfriends to flee. He could be working on Nuck Tuck too. Maybe it was someone a little higher up the food chain. Do you have any knowledge of the people who tried to kidnap the Avatar? No. Oh, he got something. You're lying. What? No, I'm not. How did they get in and out? Where are they now? I, I don't know. I'm telling you, I didn't help them. You're a traitor to the entire clan. You know, it could be, it could be him. Cause we're just going by this guy's word, right? How good is Sue at reading lies? Not good? We're just trusting this guy's word. Do we know anything about this guy? Besides the fact that he's boring at dinner parties? And it's right after they started talking about going higher up the chain. As soon as that happened, he's blaming this guard. Although it could be the guard. I need Sokka's uh, detective hat and monocle for this episode. They are just putting their hands all over everything. I guess forensic science is not all it could be in Zafu City. I got something. What? <laughs> He's eating the cookies. Let's go confront him with this evidence right now. No, let's give him a little time to sweat it out. He will talk eventually. Yeah, I'm suspicious of this guy, but I'm not sure what made Mako suspicious there. What about him not wanting to talk to the guard right away is suspicious. Maybe they're going to try to kill him because that would tie up all the loose ends and maybe end the investigation. I like how Mako, being the detective, has the instincts. How does a random guard get involved with a group of super criminals anyway? I don't know, but we all saw the evidence. It's pretty overwhelming. Listen maybe to Detective a Mako. Too overwhelming? <laughs> yes. Hey, Varric! That lava bender did a lot of damage, but he makes a nice exfoliating rock. And when you got calluses like mine, you take all the pumice stones you can get your hands on. Or in my case, feet! <laughs> oh no, Julie's face. That was horrible. If I was trying to set someone up, I would tell everyone he's guilty and then plant the evidence in his apartment as proof. Oh, you mean exactly like what you did to me? <laughs> oh yeah, that's yes, true. Just like that! I was about to say, it sounds like he has experience, but he, he does have experience in this show. Remember how great that worked? Well, not for you. <laughs> You're right. All the evidence points to this guard, but maybe he's just the fall guy. But for who? For the only person who can truly keep a secret in this city. Ai Wei. Ai Wei. I think this bookshelf slides open. He's good. It could be how Zaheer got in and out. Ai Wei's coming back. What You're not gonna hide or anything? In my house. Yeah. If you want to talk, let's talk over some tea. Don't drink the tea. You don't think I had something to do with this, do you? <gasps> you have no idea what is coming for you, Avatar. It is him. Come on, he's getting away. I'm still a little new at this, so back off. <laughs> nice. <gasps> Wow, he's good. Is everyone okay? They're more powerful than we thought. And more dangerous. That's why we have to find them. No. 
We're not hunting this group. There could be other secret agents in other parts of the world looking for you right now. I'm taking you back to Republic City where I can protect you. I feel like she just contradicted herself a little bit. Because she's like, there could be agents anywhere. I'm taking you back to Republic City. It makes sense that she feels a little bit more secure on her home turf. But I definitely see Cora's perspective. Like, this is just going to keep being a thing. If he's going to keep coming for your life, and it's hard to just wait around. And Zaheer and his group are not unbeatable. They were able to hold them off. They put them on their back foot. So why not find them and attack them? If I wasn't safe here, then I'm not safe anywhere. I have right. to stop them. It's too dangerous. You are not going. Enough. Cora, listen to Lynn. But they... Please, Lynn's only looking out for you. I like this, a united Beifong sister front. Sue, you really think Naga could track Ai Wei? Definitely. Then here, there's a jeep. Pack no, <laughs> that's terrible. But you said- I said what Lin wanted to hear and I bought you guys some time. That's devious. I'll deal with Lin in the morning. No, my united Beifong sister front. Destroyed before it even began. Nice, so this is gonna lead them to a head-to-head -head confrontation. And maybe we'll finally find out what Sahir's after besides just killing the Avatar and the President and entering the void and emptying and becoming wind. I love the pacing of this season. It's like you'll have these crazy action-packed, visually mind-blowing episodes followed by these like really introspective like slice of life, personality, human dramas, and then back to like crazy, amazing action, etc. I love this episode for the fact that we have our heroes or most of our heroes coming head to head with our villains for the first time and having a battle and seeing that in many ways, they're like a pretty good match for each other. Zaheer and crew were definitely overwhelmed, but I think a lot of that was a function of just like not being on their home turf. Like they're attacking the metal clan full of metal clan soldiers and Sue and Lin and Korra, right? Like, and even despite that fact, they managed to do a significant amount of damage. But we all know who the real hero of this episode was. It was Pabu. Overall, really fun episode. Before we end this video, I have to give a very, very special shout out to all the people who joined the top tier on Patreon. As you may have noticed, we are now at five YouTube uploads a week, and it is largely due to all the support I've been getting on Patreon. So thank you so much to you guys. A very special shout out goes to Rachel Wagner, Beatboxer Jed, Joshua Aratola, Rizal, Coperlex, Aaron Ong, Kevin Jeremiah Gaona, Jose Martinez, Draconic Moon, Doug Thomas, and Upstate Jag. To you guys, to everybody who supports on Patreon, and to everybody watching, thank you so much, and I'll see you soon for episode 9.